Lauren Welch here to talk to you today about the Autodesk Vault Professional 2012 integration with the SOS System SOLIDWORKS. As you may well know, Autodesk Vault Professional has integrations with many of the Autodesk products, but we also have third-party integrations with Pro Engineer and SOLIDWORKS. Let's take a look at the SOLIDWORKS integration here inside of SOLIDWORKS 2011. You'll notice that we can log into the Autodesk Vault, and we can also access all of the Vault commands directly from the SOLIDWORKS ribbon. Upon logging in, you'll notice that we also have a tab inside of the SOLIDWORKS Feature Manager tree. Here we can have direct access and visual cues to let us know if vaults exist in the vault and need to be checked in. I can take this existing design and I can initially load it into vault. By the plus sign seen just left of the file tree, I can tell that these don't exist in the vault yet and a check-in was necessary. Upon loading, not only does it check the files into the vault, but it also adds visualization using Autodesk DWF technology so I can view these in the standalone client. Now I can see that these files are checked into the vault and available for use. Upon opening um, the 3D model, it'll give me an alert that the file is read-only, and it's read-only because now it's vault controlled. So let's go down to the part level and I'll take a look at one of these gears. So here at the part level, again, it informs us that the part is read-only, but I'm going to go ahead and start making some changes to the file. And in this case, I'm just going to make some changes perhaps to the metadata. So under the SOLIDWORKS file properties, I can add a custom property, perhaps a vendor name. So I'll go ahead and add a vendor of Acme Supply, and I've updated the metadata in this file, but I've done it without checking out the, the actual file. I get an asterisk inside of the Vault browser to let me know that this file has changed. Upon checking it out, it maintains those changes. So when I check it in, it actually will update the metadata or the custom property inside of SOLIDWORKS and check in the file. What this means is I can make changes and if I realize that I need to check out the file and save those changes, I can do so on the fly inside of SOLIDWORKS with the Vault add-in. With that file change made, let's go ahead and create a new file. So we've checked in an assembly, we've taken it apart and changed its file uh, properties, and we've checked into the vault, let's create a brand new file. So here we'll create a SOLIDWORKS drawing. Inside of the SOLIDWORKS drawing environment, I'll just quickly lay out a, a couple of views. And again, looking at my vault tab in the feature manager tree, I get visual cues to let me know that this file, one, is not saved, and two, doesn't exist in the vault. So I'll go ahead and save the file, and now it just lets me know that it does exist on the hard drive, but it doesn't exist in my vault. So I'll simply check in this, uh, this brand new drawing adding any history or metadata that I see necessary. And you'll notice that it understands the hierarchy of the SOLIDWORKS file. So not only is it a drawing, but it understands that that gear part is referenced to it. Now back in the standalone vault client, I've categorized these files as SOLIDWORKS files. So I can have a specific set of rules and security for specific file formats. Here I can see where the file is used. I can see any change orders associated with the file. And I can view a preview with that DWF technology I spoke of earlier. You'll notice on the right hand side I have all of the properties associated with this file, whether they were created in Vault or in SOLIDWORKS itself. I can map all these SOLIDWORKS custom properties into Vault properties and manage them as such. I can also take these individual files or a set of files or items and create a change order. In this case I can specify change orders or release process numbering schemes. In this case I've set one up specific for SOLIDWORKS file forms. Here I'll go ahead and add some general title to the, re the release or change order in this case. I can add a detailed description. I can add due dates and submitted information. But here on the bottom, I can add specific properties. So I can add things like implementation strategy. And I can define these as just drop-down boxes or let users populate them as necessary. I like the idea of the drop-down menu because that way people choose from set fields. So if I run reports later, I can see exactly the types of releases or ECOs that are being run at my organization. With this information filled out, I'll go ahead and attach any additional files that are necessary, add comments. I can attach things here like PDF or Excel spreadsheets. I can adjust the routing depending on the type of process this is. And in this case, it's a new product release. So it's just a very simple routing. It's all done by the administrator. Here I can see where it's at throughout the, the routing process. I can submit status, and you'll see I get a pop-up on the bottom that lets me know a change order has been submitted and is now in my work list. So over on the left hand side, I see that the SOLIDWORKS release process has been added to my work list. I can verify it 
I can check the status, and by double clicking on any of the boxes in the status information, I pull up additional information, letting me know when it was created and who did the work there. So a very nice and direct way to see how this process can be worked through, whether it's a release process or a change order, all inside of Vault Professional, regardless of data, whether it's Autodesk native data or SolidWorks files. Now let's take a look at some of the special functionality. In this case, I have that gear part, and PRT gear, maybe that was just a concept name and really wasn't a defined part name. Well, new with Vault Professional 2012, I can simply right click and I can rename the files. This functionality has been existing for Autodesk files for some time now, but is now available to the third party files such as SolidWorks. So here I can go in, rename it with an actual part number. It understands the reference. They're managed inside of the Vault database. And now I can see if I use the where used, it would let me know that it was still consumed in that PRT-gear SolidWorks drawing. So again, I could rename various files. Let's go back into Vault and using the Vault tab inside of SolidWorks, I can actually open directly from the Vault. And in this case, I'm gonna do a, a nice simple search include subfolders, and I can search for any of the metadata, any of those custom properties, or a file name. In this case, I know it's GR something. I simply perform the search, and I find my, gear, my GR 2001 file. From here, I can open it, which is simply to view it, read only, or I can check it out so I have the right access to the file. So I've checked it out. I'm going to use that open command directly from the Vault toolbar again, and let's take a look at that high-level assembly. Remember, inside of the vault, I changed the file name. I didn't do that in my local workspace. So we want to see how that's going to be affected. I'll do a search for the SolidWorks assembly file. Comes up with the part and the drawing. And I'll open up the drawing, because the drawing includes the assembly and the part files. So here you'll see the browser tab lets me know that the SolidWorks drawing references the part and referenced the changed part name. I also have a SOLIDWORKS plot manager inside of the standalone vault client. So people that need to print out those SOLIDWORKS drawings that have been released now have the access to do that with a SOLIDWORKS specific plot manager. So here I can choose a particular drawing. With that drawing I can assign it to a particular plotter or printer in my organization. And I can add as many documents as I want here. I could submit it or schedule it and go from there. So there's a nice overview of the third party candidate integration between Autodesk Vault Professional 2012, and SOLIDWORKS. From a high level, we're following all of the key data management workflows with Autodesk tools, but now with SOLIDWORKS as well.